four key steps I would take if I'm starting my cybersecurity career again as, a, as an experienced professional. This is a question I got earlier in the week and I thought it would be great to address it. These four key steps that were the ones I would take again. I took them before and it paid off really well and I'll take them again. The fourth one is definitely the one that brings the money home. Stay with me. My name is Dr. Mukchala Sisi and I am a cybersecurity consultant and the founder of Marshall Technology or the principal consultant, Marshall Technology. I've been in tech and cybersecurity for about two decades now. And in that time, I've worked for some of the biggest companies in the world. I've taken on some of the biggest initiatives in this space, helping companies mature their cybersecurity programs. And I can tell you, it is a very, very lucrative career if you know how to navigate it. Which is what I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about, telling people about how to do this successfully and not fall into the wrong hands and um, you not know, take the wrong actions without seeing any results. Let's get started. If I were to start my career all over again in cybersecurity as an experienced professional, these are the steps I'll take. Number one, I will learn the core concepts, the basics, the fundamentals. I will learn that first because it will lead me to the rest of it. I'm not saying go and take a fundamental certification. I'm not saying, well, I don't want to name certifications like Security Plus, CC and all of that. That's not what I'm saying right now. What I'm saying right now is I will learn the core concepts of cybersecurity. That would then introduce me to the major domains within cybersecurity, domains like GRC, governance, risk, and compliance, which within itself, we can still break it for that, but we're not going there yet. But concepts like identity and access management, incident response, even security engineering, security awareness, uh, awareness, what that looks like, and an end to end of that security operations. I, I would learn what those areas really mean, and you can learn this from play, you can learn this for free for places like Cybrary. If you if you have a if you have a library card that allows you access to LinkedIn Learning or you have LinkedIn LinkedIn Learning or LinkedIn Premium, you can learn free on LinkedIn Learning as well. You can go to Coursera, places like this, or you can buy a cheap course, a, a discounted course from Udemy to get you started in the space. That definitely would give you the background, the basic knowledge you need to take the next steps that we're going to next, which is conduct an initial self-assessment. An initial self-assessment, I'm not saying a gap assessment, or so this is where you start from. Well, almost like you would call it like a SWOT analysis, but I don't want to go technical. I would call it an initial self-assessment. What you would do with that is denote the core concepts, the knowledge you gained before, would give you an idea of what is cybersecurity. I would prefer to use information security in this case. Because what you'd find is that information security is in almost every job we do today. Because we protect information. Maybe the confidentiality of it, making sure that only the right people have access to it. Or the integrity of it, making sure that they can trust the information we put out there. Uh, yes, uh, yes, and nobody's tampering with it or availability, making sure that it is available to the right people when they need it uh, at the time that they need it. I would also add that in the form that they need it, in the form that it is useful for them, I will add that to it as part of availability. There's really no part of our everyday job that doesn't have an element of information security. So with that said, and with the initial knowledge of cyber security that you have, you can understand and map out the areas of your current job or your previous past experiences that have information security elements in them that's the strength you're coming to the table with and that would help you think about which areas which domain of cyber security do i fit into you're not jumping into cyber security because everyone else is jumping into it you are figuring out exactly how you should come into it that is your strength i always tell people start from where you are Use your strength, which was you have, to get what you need. So start from where you are. That is the first thing you need to do under that assessment. Now, you've done that assessment, you've acknowledged your strength, where you're starting from. You have to then look at, within cybersecurity, what do the people in that domain area, what do they need? What skill sets 
are being looked for in that field. Go online, search jobs related to that field, and you would start to see some common themes in terms of the skill sets and experience that they are looking for. Now, you would now look at which one of these do you already have? That is the gap assessment. You can see that we didn't start from gap assessment. We started from something else. Now, that is gap assessment, what you're doing. So you're searching online, looking at what opportunities are there. It's really, again, going back to SWOT. You're looking at opportunities. And then you look at your own weaknesses. What do I already bring to the table? That is my strength. That is my uniqueness, my unique addition to this field. Now, what are my weaknesses? What are the gaps I need to fill? Because you can't help it. It's a new field. You are leveraging what you have to get into something new. Even if you're doing some element of it, it is not your core job. When you go deeper into it, so it might be a small part of your job, but when you make it your core, you realize that it goes deeper than what you were doing. That is realist. That is the reality. It goes deeper. There are gaps that you need to fill, which then takes us to the next thing. But before I go to the next thing, an example of the part of the job, the part of your job that might have that is you working in HR. You, I'm sure you do onboarding, you do off-boarding. Um, maybe access provisioning and all, if your, part, your job includes that. But let's say onboarding and off-boarding, that's user lifecycle management. It's a key part of identity and access management. That might be your, your, your starting point. Now, you know that from a policy point of view and from a process point of view, you might need the technology to add to it. Maybe you understand the principles from your job, or you're missing the technological side of it, or you are going into the governance side of it. That Quite a bit that you would still need to learn or uh, maybe you've done audits any kind of audit you understand how to collect evidence you understand how to write a, an audit report you understand how to test for control effectiveness maybe financials of uh, checking certain systems but what you don't know are the cyber security frameworks how to audit for specific requirements within cyber security and all of that again quite a bit same thing with that support you've handled incidents you escalated incident but you don't understand what makes up a cybersecurity incident or how to respond when you get some critical cybersecurity incidents. Do you know how to write a playbook or how to follow a certain playbook within cybersecurity? So these are missing pieces. Or you're even a program manager, project manager, my, like, like myself. Well, I've, I've managed programs and all of that. Do I know how to manage cybersecurity programs? Do I have the, the fundamental knowledge of running a compliance program for example these are things that and, and, and things that you would need to bring together that then leads me to the third step what is that deepen your learning to bridge the gaps that you found out in stage two how do you deepen your learning by going into programs or finding sources where you can learn Deeply, you're going deep. There are so many parts of cybersecurity. It's broad. If you go broad, you will learn everything and realize that you're able to do very little with what you've learned. But if you go narrow, you've picked your, you now, you've now scoped what you what you want to learn, and then you go deep into that path. That that is, is the, the opportunities there is lucrative. You understand the skills that are needed, and you understand what you don't have, what you have and what you don't have. Now you want to bridge that gap. You want to fill it up and, and make sure that you have what you're missing. The best way to learn this, again, I'm not saying go and pursue certification. Those in the industry, those of us in the industry, we know enough to know that theoretical knowledge is not enough to start. You need practical knowledge. Experiential learning is what you need. When, you, when you're engaging in any program, be it virtual, self-paced or instructor led make sure that it is experience based experiential learning is what you need not just any any program that promises you a job really if they give you the first job will they give you the second one that's if they actually give you the job but that's a conversation for another day i don't want to be distracted find experiential learning opportunities and you can find it from different uh, different points depending on yourself and how how well you can learn on your own or you prefer to be handheld, which is not a bad thing in itself, and all of that, which is what we do in cyber in, in martial technology. Our CSMP programs are very experience focused. You will learn exactly what you need to do the job, and you will do it as well. We call it learning by doing, experiential learning. That's what that's how we teach. You can also go through let's defend. There's the free version of it, 
and there's the enterprise version of it. If you join our community and you pay for annual, you will be getting the annual license for less there for enterprise annual license for less defend. But there, there's a free version of it, so you can start with it today. Try Acme as well. You can learn through that if you're technical, or you can use Forage if you're more on the on the governance system and compliance side. Forage will give you projects from companies like Accenture, Deloitte, and the others, IBM and others, where you would you would actually take on that right on it, and you can you can build that into a portfolio, which is the essence of building experiential learning. It helps you build confidence. It also it helps you build confidence. It also builds a portfolio for you in addition to the things you, you've identified earlier in this journey. That is a critical part of it. It's very key, but it's not as important. And I also I would also recommend having a community. Even if you can self-pace, you can learn at your own pace and all of that, have a community that you can rub minds with, that you can learn from, you can go into a session, ask questions, get clarity maybe on the market, on how to even position these things, which is what we're going to, into next. And all of that, a, a community can help. Maybe volunteer opportunity, any kind of community. We have a community on school, where again, I said, if you join that community and you pay annual, you'll be, you'll be having uh, let's defend enterprise version as an add-on to to your to your license uh, to your membership and this is a community of experts that we brought together people who train people that have, that, have, that are already in the, in the industry or people that are trying to get in will come together will learn and grow together because you need that community this journey can be lonely if walked alone now that takes me to the fourth step which is Sorry, I have this routine. I just have to make sure that I get it right. Document and showcase what you've done. This is the money maker here. If you don't know, it. there is no such thing as a hidden hidden talent. The the ones that show what they know, that the ones that make the most money, not the ones that know the most, make the most money. Like what someone said, I heard it recently that the world doesn't care what you know. Do they know that you care? If you care enough about the problems you're solving, you should be able to bring it out there and have a conversation about it. Don't wait until you're right. What's, what's the worst that will happen? Someone that knows better, or someone that has expressed it differently, will come on into your comments or even reach out to you for a conversation around how you can do it differently. You're sharing opinion as an expert in the field and people are learning. And trust me, the right people are looking. They will look at you and say, this guy, and nobody will ask you how many years have you been doing this for? They will say, this guy is solving a problem we have. And that's where you have to come from. You're coming from a problem solver perspective. You're sharing knowledge on your journey. You're not saying, oh, I'm learning something new. No. Oh, on this project, no one is asking you if that project was paid or not, because that's not the concern. The concern is, have you solved the problem we have before, right? And how have you solved it? You can bring that knowledge into our environment and, and do it again. That's what we want, because you solved the problem that we have. I've told this story a few times in our community. My deal, my first project with Deloitte, of course, I did a few, uh, I did more after that. But my first project with Deloitte came out of a 10 minute conversation, me just sharing ideas on projects that I've worked on. That project was paid, but it doesn't matter. No one asked if it was paid or not. It was a 10 minute conversation. We were having a chat, and the person told me, not knowing that that person was actually a recruiter or something, said, Can I record? Please, can you, you have to go back on what you said just now, and can I record it? He recorded it, he went to play to a senior manager, and the person said, what? This is exactly what we need. I went in there, we built a team, we, we, we delivered in eight months, and then we got on the next one, and the rest is history, like they say. Do not ever hide the knowledge and the expertise you, you're building. Develop passion for what you're doing. Because it is what it is what you do now. It is who you have become. You, it is the person you have become now. Don't ever be scared to share that to the world. Because anyone that shares the knowledge makes a lot of money. Knowledge sharing. We are in a knowledge sharing world today. Knowledge sharing makes you money. Don't ever be scared to share. And don't wait until you're perfect. To wrap it all up today. I'm saying to you that if I were to start again today, those are the four steps I would take. I will learn the core concepts and the domains in cybersecurity. I will audit where my current role already meets cybersecurity. I would understand the gaps that I need to fill 
Then three, I will fill that gap with experiential learning to help me build confidence and build my portfolio further. And four, the most important one, I will document what I've done. I will showcase it everywhere to anyone that cares to listen. And I know that is my money maker. Opportunities will come to me, even if I'm, if I'm reaching out for opportunities, but I may, depending on, on the environment and what the market looks like at the time, I may not even have to ever apply to opportunities because these opportunities will come to me because I'm solving something critical for a lot of organizations. They will come to me. That's how I would move from where I am right now into a cyber security, leveraging my own experience without having to start over. I'll see you next time. Remember, no hidden talent makes money. Those that showcase what they have, those that share knowledge, they're the ones that make money. Until next time, bye for now.